Yo, how's it going? Did you know that there are more than 68,000 species of crabs in the world? Today I want to present the newest species I created myself. This guy is a badass crab that controls this huge robot similar to Dr. Robotnik, but with a big ass shield. It will live on my game's dungeons and will be responsible for protecting the machinery of the giant mechanical dragon we live on top of. I started by sculpting the crab itself. There, now with the model ready, let's quickly paint it. With this ready, I started to block out the robot that the crab will control. I'm going to keep the theme of aquatic animals, which control the steampunk machines for most of the enemies on these dungeons. And there is a lore reason for this, okay? It's not just because I watched Umbrella Academy that one time, and I thought the fish there was really cool. For the enemy design itself, I imagined something more squared looking, because it gives off the vibe of a robust enemy that can take a lot of hits. And I wanted to make it look like a tank. Strong, slow, and also because it would have the tank treads on its feet. And to do these treads, I modeled just one piece, and then I used a curve to iterate on each piece until I got the full loop. And to animate these pieces following a curve is fairly easy in Blender, but there is a catch. With this enemy, I wanted to learn and implement two new things. A system where the enemy can interrupt our attacks, and you can also break that defense, and how to bring an animation based on curves from Blender to Unreal. And this here was a lot harder than I thought. When you have to animate a character, generally you would make bones for it, and from those bones you can move the character and then export that movement into a game engine, be it Unreal or Unity. But in the case of this treadmill, it has no bones, just these pieces following a curve and that's pretty much it. I spent a long time trying this Alembic export thing, but I didn't manage to make it work. The solution I found was from this Chinese guy that modeled a sperm with a monkey's head and wanted to animate it using a curve. Now here's where the problem starts. Using the method he showed worked, but I had to make one bone for each piece. I needed to make not only one bone for each separate piece, but then afterwards I had to go inside of each one of these pieces attributing the weight for the corresponding bone. 22 times I did this, and I lost count the first time and jumped one piece ahead, and I had to restart it all over again. But then you think, well, this is the worst part, right? Because following this tutorial from this dude here, we just need to add some modifiers to these bones to follow the curve and it's all good? Yeah, almost. From these modifiers, one of them copies the position each bone needs to be, and the other copies the rotation the bone needs to have. But as you can see here, the bones keep breaking at the 180 degrees. This is because the curve only passes a value of up to 180, I think. And then when we're almost getting to 180, it kind of flips back to like minus 180. From what I understood, this is by design and it's not something we can fix per se. So I had to animate bone by bone 22 times, rotating as to make them stay on the aligned position they needed to be. At least their positioning was all done, so I just needed to worry about the rotation. Anyway, an hour and a half later, I managed to finally have this treadmill inside of Unreal. To animate this treadmill, I used the same animation logic for both sides. This way, each one of them can work separately from each other. They basically take a point in the world directly in front of the treadmill and another one on the back. If this treadmill in that particular moment is closer to the point in front of it than the point in the back, it is going to move forward. And if it is closer to the point in the back, it is going to move backwards. The cool thing about having this logic separate on each thread is that if you rotate in place, they will rotate in opposite directions. And I also made a logic where each thread creates an audio source and only plays it when it moves. Besides the thread, I also made a skeleton for the rest of the robot and another one for the crab itself. For the crab, I made four different animations of it standing still and another one of it kind of moving. These four idle animations are going to play at random, 
But when the robot starts moving, it will blend into the movement animation. Because then we'll have the impression that the crab is controlling the robot by slapping its hands on the controls. Now for the robot, I made an animation of it idling as well, with this machinery glitchiness here, and I also made this one of it moving. Since this guy is going to move using tank threads, I made an animation to make it look like it is levitating forwards. It's gonna look pretty nice with the threads, trust me. Besides that, I also implemented the shield. There's one of it on its back and another shield attached to its hand. Then I can detect if the crab is in combat, and if it is in combat I can execute an animation where it is going to grab the shield from behind its back. And there it is. Poor little fella just walking aimlessly. So let's now implement the mechanic of blocking attacks from the player. A couple weeks ago I made this thing where you can now hit enemies using axes and pickaxes, right? Basically if you see an axe, it works like a regular melee weapon, but if you hit a tree, it is going to break the animation in half. To make this mechanic I used the same setup. Inside of the enemy I created a component that does all of this blocking logic. Then when the character goes to hit a melee weapon on the enemy, it is going to calculate if the player is facing them and if it is defending. In case it is, it will interrupt the player's attack. And it even does a little noise, check it out. It is kinda cool, but I think we also need a way to break this defense, right? In Spark Muts, you can execute light and heavy attacks using the left mouse button and the right mouse button. So my idea is that the light attacks can be blocked and this will interrupt your combo but heavy attacks are going to break the enemy's defenses. And since I already have a way of figuring out if the current attack is light or heavy, it makes it very easy to add this defense break. So if the enemy is blocking and you execute a heavy attack, it is going to play this little animation and stay stunned for a little while. This is the framework for fighting against this dude here. You break its defenses and lay down the hammer. Now when it wakes up, the idea is that it will attack you and now you gotta dodge. So for them to attack, I made two new animations which will be the small combo that they will do right after defending. There's this first one here with three attacks and this here is not a grab, okay? It is just trying to pinch you. And then there's the second one, a little bit faster with it hitting you with a shield. And if you dodge all of these attacks and keep breaking its guard down, it is going to fall to the ground like detractors from the movie Cars. The biggest problem I faced here, besides the treadmill, was the sound design for this guy. Like what kind of noise do you think it would do? Do crabs even make noises? Would it be like a mud crab from Skyrim maybe? If so, can you even hear it with this glass covering it up? For now this enemy won't do much noise, it is more just the noises of it hitting the floor or falling down like a goofball, but in the future I can do more polishing touches on this. This enemy is not in the game for now and I'm the only one that gets to test it, but it will be in the game very soon with the update that I'm making which will change the history of Spark Muts and you will finally be able to have something really cool to do in the game besides building your house. But yeah, that's it. See ya.